Welcome to my lecture online. To gain a better understanding of instantaneous power and average power, we have an interesting little problem here. We have an object with mass m which is being pushed across a frictionless horizontal surface with a force that's equal to 2x squared. In other words, as x increases, the force increases in a quadratic sense. Also, the distance covered is expressed in terms of t. In this case, the distance covered is equal to 4t squared, and they're asking us to find the instantaneous power as a function of time, and to find the average power as a function of time. And notice, this is part one. We're going to do this in a similar fashion, or quite a little bit of a different fashion, to come up with the same answer. So first of all, how do we find the instantaneous power? Well, it turns out that by definition, we can say that power is equal to work divided by time, and work is equal to force times distance over time. And since distance divided by time is equal to velocity, this can be written as force times velocity. So the instantaneous power as a function of time is equal to the force, which is 2x squared multiplied times the velocity. Well, let's see here, the velocity. They didn't give us the velocity, but they gave us position. So what we can do here is we can say that velocity is equal to the derivative dx dt. With other words, it's the d dt of what x is equal to, which is 4t squared. And therefore, we can say that the velocity as a function of time is going to be equal to 8 times t. So we can go ahead and plug that in here. This is equal to 2x squared multiply times v, which is 8 times t. Now notice the velocity was in terms of time, but the force wasn't, and we want power as a function of time, which means we need to convert this in terms of time. But notice that x is equal to 4t squared, so this can be written as 2 times the quantity 4t squared squared times 8t. And notice, if I square that, I end up with the following. I end up with 2 times 16t to the 4th power, 16t to the 4th power, times 8t, 8t. And notice that 2 times 8 is 16, and 16 times 16 is 256, so this can be written as 256 times t to the 5th power, and that is indeed the instantaneous power as a function of time. So notice that the instantaneous power at time equals 0 is 0, at time equals 1 is 256, at time equals 2 is 256 times 2 to the fifth power, which is 32 times 256. In other words, the instantaneous power at 2 seconds is 30 times, 32 times bigger than the instantaneous power after 1 second. All right, now we still don't have the average power. So how do we find the average power? So think about this. Power, as a function of time, looks something like this. And of course, that would be as time goes to one second, two seconds, three seconds, and so forth. So to find the average power, what we could do is we can calculate the area underneath the curve and then divide that by the width of that curve. That's how we find the average power. In other words, p average is equal to the integral of the instantaneous power times dt divided by the time period, and in general, that would be equal to t. So this would be in terms of any value of t. So if we do that, that would be equal to the integral of 256 t to the fifth power dt, all divided by time. And so the average power is going to be equal to 256 t to the sixth power divided by 6 times t. And 256 divided by 6, let's see here, that's 7, that's 13, that's not divisible by 6, but they're both divisible by 3, so this can be written as 128 divided by 3 times t to the fifth power, and there is an equation that gives us the average power as a function of time versus the instantaneous power as a function of time. And of course, this would be over a period of t seconds, and it doesn't matter how long the period is, that will be the correct equation. And that is how that's done.